pop-up craft shows. What's that? I'm going to explain it and even go through a little bit of what I participated in coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to the Loft Above the Shop. And what I want to talk about here are craft shows and what specifically are called pop-up craft shows. Well, where did they get that name? Well, as you can see here from some footage I took of uh, the one I participated in, you have what's called a pop-up, a little shelter. It's not like a craft show just suddenly appears somewhere. These are planned and there's usually an organizer and you pay for a certain space, whether it be 10 by 10 or I did a 10 by 20 because I had so much stuff. So is this worthwhile? Well, it can be. Um, let me say right up front, this was the first craft show I've done since 1992. Uh, I was out of the whole business and back then I made dollhouse furniture, little bitty couches and beds and dressers and that type of thing. I'm into a whole bunch of other different stuff now since I've retired, but as I mentioned I had not done a craft show since 1992 and things were way different back then. Um, then everybody paid with cash or occasionally you might take a check if the person appeared to be honest. Um, it was almost impossible to take credit cards at a craft show. Uh, you didn't really have there were cell phones but they weren't really prevalent the as far as Wi-Fi goes that was almost impossible to find anywhere as would have been a pretty scarce thing so fast forward here to 2022 quite a while later uh, people come to you now and they purchase some things and they want to use a credit card there's different things you can use I use what's called a Zettle it's uh, from PayPal because I have PayPal accounts and it very easily processes a credit card through your cell phone using uh, 5G. I mean, it's just that simple. And of course, other people pay with cash, and that's a good thing. And I try to keep things in round numbers so I'm not diddling around with a whole bunch of little change. So is it worthwhile? It can be or it can't be. You, you have to think about a few things when you're selling your stuff. How much inventory do you have? Is it something that people are going to want to buy? Uh, that's kind of unpredictable sometimes. Infrastructure, you're going to need tables. Uh, you're, most people have a pop-up. Um, there are some people that don't, but if you should get some inclement weather or it's really, really hot and sunny, you want to be underneath that shelter shade thing. You need a way to hold that down. You'll need a way to display your stuff. And as uh, you saw, uh, if you saw the video I made here a little while back on a mug display stand, I made two of those so I could display my mugs and they it worked out real well as you can see here. So what sells at these pop-up craft shows? Well, a lot of different things can and then there's some things that can't. And you know, customize things if you're going to make, uh, for example, coffee mugs and I do a lot of these. We sell these for $7 and I sell a lot of them. If you're going to customize it and have somebody's name on it or maybe they want a picture on it, You'll have to take an order for that. Uh, it's not practical to have your sublimation printing in your laptop and your heat press and all that kind of stuff at a craft show. That and it takes a lot of time. Uh, you'll need to be attending the customers that come up and you won't be able to concentrate on the project at hand. I did take an order for a custom mouse pad, but otherwise I just sold things that were on the tables. Garden flags, coasters, of course mugs, of you name it, you know, if I had it out there, did I make a million dollars that weekend? No, I didn't. Uh, there was another event going on in the next town up down along the Mississippi River, which was an absolutely huge event. They do have vendors down there, but in order to get a vendor space, you have to know somebody that knows somebody that's friends with somebody that knows somebody that's on the board. It's a little bit political, so we couldn't get a space down there. Of course, I, di I didn't look into it. I suppose I could have pursued that. I know if you get a vendor space in a very large event, it's going to be expensive for that space. So think about that, about what you're going to sell and how much you're going to have to mark stuff up. Don't go to one of these and lose money. That's not the point of it. Uh, one of the reasons I have not done any craft shows or pop-up shows for so many years is I've been very successful selling this stuff direct and I don't need to uh, expand out that way if 
that and it takes up a, an entire weekend. Uh, it was a lot of prep for me. It burned to Saturday. Of course, I'm retired, so all the days are pretty much the same, but still, it, if you're working, it's going to burn a weekend. So something to think about and there are some very very large craft shows that go on that are not really called pop-up they're just big craft shows where you may have a hundred vendors there so there you're gonna to have to do a little bit of investigating to find out what's selling what you're selling what the other people are selling so you don't have 45 people all in a row trying to sell license plates you know it's you want to be unique you want to have something that nobody else has um, I happen to have that advantage, especially with our engraved, laser engraved ceramic tiles. Uh, not too many people have those. And the mouse pad designs I do, they're, they're very custom. Garden flags, I sold some garden flags, but lots of people sell garden flags. You get on Etsy and put in garden flags and you're going to have hundreds of listings of different types and you can get them personalized, you can get them single sided, double sided, with the stand, without the stand all different sizes so that's a very highly competitive space there you need to do something that's more um, unique uh, these mugs I do the things I put on them are unique and I'm licensed to use all the graphics and everything I use on them but that's not something everybody has uh, my granddaughter makes something called freshies they're air fresheners for cars and she sold quite a few of them at that show uh, it's a very popular item with people that the warmer your car gets, the more it's going to smell, as they say. And the warmer these little freshies get, the more aroma they release and it keeps your car fresh. And there's a whole bunch of different scents. And she makes these. And th they sold quite well. So there again, it depends on what you're selling. I put on a pretty large display, as you can see here. But I did not make thousands of dollars either. No, I didn't lose any money, but uh, was it worthwhile? Well, it was fun, let's put it that way. So, a little something about selling your stuff and what a pop-up craft show is. So if you get anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. Roger in the loft above the shop, thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.